How's it going, Redeemer? As we continue to journey through the New Testament together as a church, the next book up is 1 Thessalonians. So I wanna tell you a little bit about this book to help you understand what you're about to read. In AD 49, Paul takes a missionary trip, a missionary journey to Thessalonica. He gets there and this is a Roman ruled city and there's basically an imperial cult. If you're wondering what in the world is an imperial cult, the government, they pretty much treat Caesar like a god, right? So he's divine. And so for anyone coming in and preaching a message or doing anything that could be a perceived attack on the imperial cult, that would have been considered high treason. And here comes Paul preaching a message about Jesus being king while King Caesar is on his throne. That could be problematic. That could cause persecution. Well, he goes to the synagogue. He begins to preach Jesus to the Jews, and there's some converts. And then other people in town convert to Christianity, and this church is born. Well, it doesn't take long for the Jews who have lost members from their synagogue to cause a riot and to drive Paul out of town. So he has to bolt in the middle of the night. Well, once he leaves, he starts to be concerned for this church because they had a pretty rough start to face trials, to face persecutions, and to do so without a leader. So Paul tries to get back to him again and again and again. It just doesn't work out. He's wondering if the people might have misunderstood what happened and why he left. He's also fearful that, that maybe they will fall away from their faith because of what they're about to go through or what they're going through. So he sends Timothy on his behalf. Timothy goes to strengthen this church, to encourage this church, and to find out how they're doing. And he goes back to Paul and says, Paul, they're doing great. Like they're standing strong in their faith. They're growing in their faith. In fact, they're an example for all the Christians around this area to follow. And so Paul, when he writes this letter, you can feel it. He is so encouraged by this church. So the first part of the book, chapters one through three, Paul explains why he had to leave and he also just continues to encourage them to stay faithful in the things they're doing. But then in chapters four and five, we get to the second part of the book where he offers some specific instructions. The first thing he does is he says, here's something not to do. He's like, look, you've got to abstain from sexual immorality. There's a way of, of following the culture, where the culture thinks this is normal, this is okay, but God calls you to something better. Then he calls them to keep doing something. He goes, brotherly love, you're doing awesome with that. Do it more and more. And then a concern that that church had, a question they had for Paul, revolved around the second coming of Christ. They're like, what's happening to our brothers and sisters who have died at the hands of the government through these persecutions? Like, where are they? What's gonna happen with us? When is Jesus coming back? And so Paul addresses these end times questions for them as well so that Jesus coming back is not something to fear, but something to, to find encouragement in and, and to find hope and strength in. So that's gonna be Thessalonians. Now, maybe you're wondering, how in the world is a book written 1900 years ago have anything to do with us today? Well, as you read it, I want you to think about how you face persecution as a Christian in our culture and what it would look like for you to remain faithful. What would it look like for you to be an example for other people to follow? Hey, we're gonna pick up in the next video with 2 Thessalonians, but let's dive in and find how we can be faithful to Christ through this.